So, and we are a church who's called to watch and intercede. So we need to watch and intercede. All right. So this morning uh, we're going to get into God's word, and uh, it's my honor and privilege to introduce my dear friend Tara. Uh, I met Tara in uh, Dubai in 2016. Uh, he had hosted a youth conference uh, for myself, uh, Hari Rao, and um, Brother Sheldon Bangera. So the three of us were ministering at his youth conference in 2016. Uh, that's the first time I met him. And uh, when we met, I kind of clicked and you know, we understood that he carries such a heart for the kingdom of God. Uh, and uh, ever since we've been good friends and Tara and Manisha and they have a beautiful son by name Zephon uh, I think they will be here in some time but um, so they have been having a desire to see the body of Christ unite and uh, so they have really built some very uh, powerful principles on uniting several men of God several ministries and uh, they've conducted several conferences in Dubai and uh, they work very extensively with uh, you know Dr. Amos who was here you know the last month and uh, and several other ministers of God they have brought them together and their heart is to see the kingdom of God built amen their heart is to see God's church unite together and serve with one purpose and uh, very recently they've also established a fellowship um, and uh, they've been pioneering a church in Dubai and he's also a marketplace um, you know uh, uh, man of God you can say <laughs> he's, he's working in the marketplace as God's representative as God's ambassador and uh, he's serving and he's also you know uh, in the church uh, you know building God's kingdom so we're so thankful we're so honored Tara for even accepting our invitation for a small number of people and uh, <laughs> uh, we're so thankful that you could come and uh, so we'd love to invite you please come and you know share yeah thank you yeah let's give him a good hand Your spirit, Lord, pour out your spirit, pour out your spirit on your people, O God. Fill, Lord, fill, fill, fill your children. Let revival reign, Lord, in that land. Let your love, let your love drown out all vengeance. Let your love fill every heart, O God. The desire for revenge, Lord, let it die in Jesus' name. The desire for revenge, Lord, let it die in Jesus' name. Forgiveness, Lord, forgiveness, forgiveness. Fill every heart with your love. Fill every heart with forgiveness in Jesus' name. Supernatural forgiveness, Lord. Supernatural forgiveness. Supernatural forgiveness. Supernatural forgiveness. Supernatural forgiveness. Supernatural Forgiveness, Father, in Jesus' name. Supernatural forgiveness, in Jesus' name. Shalom, O oh Lord, your shalom. We speak your shalom, in Jesus' name. We speak your shalom, in Jesus' name. We speak your shalom, in Jesus' name. Your shalom, we speak it over Israel right now. We speak it over Palestine right now. Lord, let souls be turned into Paul's in Jesus' name. Let souls be turned into Paul's in Jesus' name. Pour out your spirit, Lord, 
on Gaza, pour out your spirit. On the West Bank, pour out your spirit. On Tel Aviv, pour out your spirit. On Jerusalem, pour out your spirit, oh God. Pour out your spirit, Lord Jesus. Pour out your spirit. Silence every lie of the enemy, oh God. Silence of every voice of the enemy, Lord. Every voice calling for revenge, every voice of hatred, let it be silenced in Jesus' name. Let healing flow, O oh Lord. Forgiveness in Jesus' name. Forgiveness in Jesus' name. Healing in Jesus' name. We pray for those in authority, Lord, across the Middle East. We pray for rulers and all those in authority across the Middle East. Leaders from the West, leaders from the East. Decision makers, lawmakers, heads of, our, of the armies across the Middle East. All the way from the US to Russia to China, all across the Lord, all across the globe. We lift the leaders before you. Pour out your spirit, O oh God. Let every decision be made under your influence, Holy Spirit. Every decision be made under your influence. Every decision be made under your influence. If there's any influence that's not from you, we break it right now in Jesus' name. We break it right now in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Advisors, ambassadors of peace arise. Ambassadors of peace arise. Advisors speaking peace, let them arise in every nation. Yes, Lord. Pour out your spirit, O Lord. Pour out your spirit, Jesus. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Jesus. Yes, For you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one. You are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. We worship you with lips of adoration. We worship you as a company of praise. Let this temple be a place where your glory is embraced as we stand in awe and worship you. For you are great, you do miracles so great. There is no one else There is no one else You are great You do miracles so great There is no one else There is no one else like you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Whew. Yeah, 
There is no one else like him. Amen? Amen. 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 Please, please take a seat. Please take a seat. Thank you so much for praying. <clears throat> All right. Wow. I just feel like we could just just continue worshiping and, and praying and just spend, spend the uh, rest of the morning with that. But I feel like I have a, a news flash. All right, spoiler alert. I'm a very, very boring guy. <laughs> All right. So if you, if you came expecting, because you had some amazing people stand here over the months, you know, but I'm, I'm a very conversational kind of a guy. So this is more like an extended you know, living room conversation, all right? So this is going to be more of a conversation than a preach. Is that okay? All right, all right. So, you know, what I'm going to do, I'm going to, spoiler alert again, I'm going to crack some really bad jokes. <laughs> just to test if you're sleeping or if you're dozed off or not, all right? So just to make me happy, just laugh, all right? Okay, all right. So, um, um, yeah, I, I, how many of you like my shirt? Yeah, cool shirt, yeah, yeah. So this, is the, this is the first bad joke for this morning, right? The first bad joke is, I usually tell people, if you cannot see Jesus in me, at least you can see Jesus on me. You know? <laughs> so, at least, if, you can't see, if you can't see the Lord, the love of Jesus in me, at least the shirt, you know? Yeah, let the shirt minister to you. So if you don't remember me, at least remember the shirt. <laughs> you, know? you, may, you may not remember much from the message today, but I purposely put in some things there that, uh, that I hope will stay with you. Uh, I hope will stay with you. Um, what's the first thing I have on there? Yeah, this is good. This is good. All right, so I'm just going to read from 1 Peter chapter 5 from verse 1 to 8. All right, you can read it along with me. To the elders among you, I appeal as a fellow elder and a witness of Christ's sufferings who also will share in the glory to be revealed. Be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care. Watch over them, not because you must, but because you are willing, as God wants you to be. Not pursuing. Uh, I, I, think, I think there is an uh, issue with animation, is it? Is there something? Sorry about that. Yeah, it, it's automatically changing. All right. So I, I love that. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and read it from here. I love that verse. Just bear with me. Just bear with me. Is it all right? Almost? Okay. Yeah. But because you're willing as God... Yeah, you can keep it like that. That's good. Keep it like that. That's all right. That's okay. You don't have to uh, move it around. You can leave it as it is. Don't worry. I think the animations are, are messed up there. My apologies for that. <laughs> okay. Uh, I love this. Not pursuing dishonest gain, but eager to serve. All right, I'll read it again from verse 2. Be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care, watching over them, not because you must, but because you're willing, as God wants you to be, not pursuing dishonest gain, but eager to serve, not lording it over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. I just want to take this opportunity to just say how jealous I am of you guys. Holy jealousy, all right? Because when I got saved, uh, I mean, I, I served in a mega church for 10 years that, in the Middle East that had like 8,000 to 9,000 people. But I'm telling you something. Um, having served in a mega church for, you know, for 10 years, 8,000 to 9,000 people, you may not necessarily have the kind of love and the, and the, and the uh, community and the oneness that you may have, that you have in this room right now. I'm speaking from experience. I'm speaking from experience. So many times what happens in ministries, you may actually crave the size, but there are things that are lost when, when size becomes too big. 
you know. And the other thing I want to I want to just place here is uh, uh, place before you is I mean I, I came to the Lord from a Hindu background. I walked into into a church. I'm so grateful for the church where I served for 10 years. Signs, wonders, and miracles galore every week that blew my mind. So for a Hindu guy like me, I needed those signs and wonders to grab my attention. So I'm grateful for that. But I just want to, I want to say that you guys are so blessed to have a shepherd like this man right here. It's very, very, very rare. Very, very, very rare. Um, and again, I'm, I'm saying this after seeing a lot. I've been a believer for 19 years. Next year will be 20 years. I've seen a lot over 20 years. Um, I've, seen, I've seen a lot. And coming from a Hindu background, you, see, you tend to see a lot more, if you know what I mean. Right? Because I, I was talking to Cleophas the other day. You know, uh, Everyone's auditing everything. Everyone's auditing everyone. All right? Everyone is auditing everyone. You are auditing me as we speak. I guess. <laughs> right? So my point is that in all my years, I can, if I were to make a list of top 10 leaders that I know who, ha who are gifted but have integrity and character as well, it's a very short list that I can make. And, and that man figures on that list. All right? So, and that's the reason I'm here. Uh, uh, I'll be frank with you. I get invites. I'm from Calcutta. I was there uh, um, a week ago. Uh, I get invitations to speak that I do not, that I'm not led to accept. Because you can always, every, you can, if you've got any amount of discernment, you can sometimes read the motives behind an invitation. But when, when, he, when he wrote to me and I was like, I cannot say, no, I've got to somehow make this happen. I'm just so honored to be here. It's my honor more than anything else. It's my honor more than anything else. Um, so yeah, I just want to see you go. You're blessed to have, you're blessed to have him um, as, as, a, as, a, as a pastor and as, and as a leader. And I want to challenge you and dare you and go all out. Uh, go all out in supporting everything that he is being led by the Lord to do. And I want to speak more about that in a bit. Thank you, bro, for the next one, if I can. Yeah, and I love this. Let's read on. From 5 to 8. In the same way, you who are younger, submit yourselves to your elders. All of you, clothe yourselves with humility towards one another. Because God opposes the proud, but shows favor to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that you that he may lift you up in due time, cast all your anxiety, all your cares on him because he cares for you. Now here's the punch, verse 8. Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of sufferings. All right. And now I have a very interesting video. I think that's coming up next. Next is that the next? Ah, yeah, that's it. Now I wanted to play, pay close, play very close attention to this, and I want to talk to you after playing this. Yeah. Position your cheek. There it goes, there it goes, there it goes. There it goes, there it goes. Check that video. Take it.
All right. What did you get from that? Anybody? What, what struck you from that video? Gone. <laughs> yeah. Okay. What did what did that other buffalo who came? What did it do? Who did it hit? You would think that it would go after the lion. It didn't go after the lion. It hit the. And basically, what was it saying, buddy? Stand up. You can do this. This guy, you can beat this guy. You know, I would like to propose to you, we have the ministry of headbutting. <laughs> you know, this, I saw this a few months ago and I shared it with everyone I knew. And I'm like, man, creation is preaching to us, man. <laughs> we, we've had the ministry of headbutting. And sometimes if there's a little bit of headbutting, it's okay. Right? You should be okay with some headbutting. Sometimes those who love you will headbutt. <laughs> Love makes you headbutt, whether, that's ha whether it happens in a marriage, or it happens in friendship, or even in ministry right here, it's totally okay. Headbutting is okay. Love makes you headbutt. If that, if that bull did not intervene, that friend would have been lunch, <laughs> right? So love makes you headbutt. But then comes the next question. After that deliverance happens, you're delivered from the enemy, what's the next choice? What's, what's the next step that you should, you should make? But before I go into that, I love this. Uh, there you are, the next slide. Thank you, bro. We can read this together. Now, obviously, we, 1 Peter 5 talks about uh, uh, the roaring lion and all of that. The enemy is like a roaring lion. Now, something about lions that I discovered, I'm a huge animal buff, right? I love National Geographic and all of that. Lots to learn from creation. Now, an, like a lion, you think, would go after the the strongest member of the pack. Lions don't do that. You know what they do? They go after the weakest or the one that's injured. They stalk, they stalk for days. And they are observing which is the one that's walking with a limp. And let's target that, that one. Or the youngest. Enemy works the same way. So even in ministry, I, I've seen a lot in 19 years. I'm telling you, in my first year in the Lord, in the first six months, I'm in a mega church in Dubai, and in my first, <laughs> in my first six months, I ran into Seventh-day Adventists, I ran into Jehovah's Witnesses, and there's nobody to help you or guide you through that. You have to navigate all of those conversations with the help of the Holy Spirit. There's no pastor, there's nobody to actually help you or, or guide you through that, right? Um, what am I trying to say? Enemy is dangerous, but the enemy always goes after the weakest, right? And those who are the youngest. Keep that in mind. But I love this as well. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. Lest Satan should take advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. So what are his devices? Right? Isolation, lies, deception, intimidation. And, I, and there are scriptures to back all of these, right? But I think you would also notice that bull who fell into the lion's trap had strayed away from the, yeah? And I think that's one of the biggest traps we tend to fall into is isolation. Newsflash, having served at a mega church for a decade, I can tell you, you can be in a crowd and still be isolated. That's a good place to say, you can be in a crowd of 8,000, 9,000 people four days a week. I was in church four days a week. But looking back, I realized, though I was there four days a week for a decade, you, I was still technically isolated. Everyone knew my name because obviously I was in the front and doing all of that, but I didn't know anybody because there was no time for fellowship. There was no time for community. You're too busy for that, right? Um, so that's one thing I want to leave with you. Uh, I think we can move to the next one, and I love this. Uh, maybe you can try <laughs> going into presentation mode. Let's see how this goes. Let's take a chance here. All right. What do you see from this picture? What do you see?
Thank you so much. So good. So good. He has the best view in the house. Right? <laughs> covering, <laughs> covering each other, right? What else do you see? So this is actually a true story that was, uh, that was kind of written by uh, Aesop or whoever. But this is a story that's kind of taught in schools. And I think this is a story that we adults need to kind of revisit, you know? A story of how this lion comes to attack. And the moment the lion comes to attack, all the bulls, they form a, the four bulls, just turn their tails towards each other and they form a, in all four directions, they form a defense strategy. So the lion cannot attack. But then there was a disagreement between the bulls and the bulls go their separate ways. And then the lion goes after each of them because they're isolated and gets them one by one. It, it's, a, it's a story that's actually taught in schools in some parts of the world. I think we need to revisit that more often, right? Uh, it's, I'm, I'm just going to present food for thought before you, okay? You can draw your own conclusions from what I'm going to share in the course of, course of our time together. But I think this whole subject of unity is a huge, huge, big, big deal. Uh, you can go ahead, bro. Uh, next one and the next. Yeah, yeah. So it's your choice at the end of the day, whether it's 8,000 member church or a smaller gathering, it's your choice. Do you want to be independent or do you want to be interdependent? It's your choice. It's your choice. You can be part, no matter what size of the gathering, at the end of the day, you can choose to be independent or you can choose to be interdependent. I want to challenge you and dare you. The Lord is inviting you and me to be interdependent. Independence doesn't work. Trust me, I've tried it. doesn't work. <laughs> okay? Speaking from experience, right? Interdependence. That's the challenge for us. And I love this. Uh, you can read it with me. The members should have the same care for one another. And if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. Remember those who are in prison as though in prison with them and those who are mistreated since you also are in the body. All right. I was talking to a friend some time ago and I was saying that leprosy as a disease is basically a very weird, strange disease where basically you don't even realize that a part of your body is getting eaten up. That area becomes numb. That area becomes numb. And it, it basically gets eaten off. And I was challenging some friends and I was telling them recently that perhaps we are not realizing that one of the challenges that we need to address is maybe, just maybe, we need to deal with the spiritual leprosy in our midst. Because the moment you stop caring for what someone else is going through, whether that's in the church or in the wider body of Christ, what people are going through in Israel or Ukraine or wherever or in Manipur, the moment that I don't care attitude comes in, that's a dangerous sign. That's a symptom of spiritual leprosy. You're part of the body. It's getting eaten away. But ask any leprosy patient. They don't feel pain necessarily because that area becomes numb. You're numb to the pain of the same part of your, of your body. Um, I, love, I love this. I love this, uh, both these portions of text, right? And so in Christ, we though many form one. You can read it with me. And each member belongs to all the others. That's a good place to say amen again. All right. Going further. The million dollar question. How will the world believe that Jesus was sent by the Father? Yeah, I'm actually looking for an answer. <laughs> Tell me, if anyone were to ask you the question, how will the world believe that Jesus was sent by the Father? What would your answer be? Amen. Thank you so much. Amen to that. Absolutely. Amen to that. And everyone knows that's the most, you may not know any other words, but you know that one, right? <laughs> that's, that's the usual story. Yeah. Uh, Psalm 30, Psalm 23, 91, you know, kind of tend to camp there. That's there on the wall of every home. Yeah. But my, I'm coming back to my question. How will the world believe that Jesus, how will Bangalore believe that Jesus was sent by the Father? How will India believe that Jesus was sent by the Father? How will they believe? 
Thank you, sir. That's so good, seeing us. All right. And what are they seeing when they see us? They see my shirt, of course. <laughs> what are they seeing when they see us? I'm going somewhere with this, okay? But I, 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 if you didn't have good breakfast, I'm giving you food for thought, all right? So what are they seeing when they see us? I'm telling you, as a Hindu guy, looking into church for quite some time from the outside, I saw more division than anything else. And that's like, how many denominations do you have? Like, really? Aren't you all reading the same book? Right? But there, there's like a lot of division. The church is more famous for what it's against than what it is for. Great sermons online on the love of God, but, hmm, is that really on display practically, right? I was speaking to a friend recently and I was saying, you know, it's amazing the kind of legacy Mother Teresa left behind. What a legacy she left in Calcutta. No one, no one can. And this dear friend who was a worship leader at a mega church said, yeah, bro, but she's in hell, nah? And I was like, huh? Really? <laughs> He's like, yeah, she is. I'm like, you know, bro, let's leave the judging to God. <laughs> But if, if Mother Teresa is really in hell, then you and I are in deep trouble, bro. <laughs> you and I are in deep, deep, deep trouble. Because that amazing woman lived out Matthew 25. And I'm not seeing, I don't think anyone has lived out Matthew 25 the way she did. In fact, when, when she went to the UN, she spoke, she was invited to speak at the UN, and she gave one of the most powerful messages against abortion. And Bill Clinton, who was president at that time, was asked for his response to what Mother Teresa said. Mother Teresa has spoken out against abortion and the laws that you are trying to pass in the U.S. and everything. And Bill Clinton had the good sense, good politician, he had the good sense to reply and say, it is very difficult for me to argue against a life that is so beautifully lived. Got sense. He knew that anything he says is going to come back against him. There's no way I can say anything or argue against this incredible life. So he just gave the best reply just be silent, don't mess with this lady. Right? It is so difficult to argue against a life that is so beautifully lived. I want to propose to us that sometimes we are very well known for our. Preaching, I, I, I'm putting myself in there. It's easier to preach an awesome message than for me to love my neighbor or, or, or my colleagues who get on my nerves. I'll be, I'm being honest with you. I, I, I'm being very honest with you, all right? Or even for, for me to, you know, <laughs> for my wife and I to kind of work through our fireworks sometimes. We've been married for 12 years. We just finished 12 years a few days ago. Right? But I'll be, I'll be lying if I'm saying that there haven't been fireworks over 12 years. But you know what? Fireworks are okay. Fireworks are normal. In fact, if, you really, if there's a real friendship, the guys I've been friends with for 20 years, those friendships have stood the test of time because there have been some fireworks in those friendships. Otherwise, it's just a superficial, it's not really deep. You know what I mean? If there's a genuine friendship, there's going to be fireworks. Right? I'm not saying Kung Fu Panda kind of thing. No, you know, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm being healthy fireworks, all right? Disagreements, you know, volumes may go up and down a bit. But then you find a way to build the house. We find a way to build the house. We're building together, right? We find a way to come together, build together. That's, that's where you actually practice the whole forgiveness thing, right? And that then spills out into what we do here. Right? Make sense? Am I making any sense? Yeah. Are you bored? Are you sleepy? All right. Moving on. How will the world know that Jesus was sent by the Father? The answer is right here on the screen, actually. What was on Jesus' prayer list in John 17? Anyone can guess? What was on his prayer list? Anyone? Thank you. Can you give her a clap, please? <laughs> Clapping is good for blood circulation. You can do better. Thank you. <laughs> Blood circulation. See, coming to church makes you healthy. 
right? Come to church, makes you healthy. Keep the blood flowing. All right. John 17. Move on to the next verse. Let's read this together. I love this. Of all the things that Jesus could pray for in John 17, of all the things, he, he prayed for this. Let's read this together. I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they all may be one, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. Million dollar question. How, I'm going to ask it again, how will the world believe that Jesus was sent by the Father? I'm asking it again. The answer is right here. He leaked out the answer in the prayer. It is true. So what should be the number one priority of every believer, leader, minister? To work for that, to invest in that, because it's not going to be crusades. Bangalore's seen its fair share of crusades. Is it going to be crusades? Is it going to be whatever? Is it going to be whatever outreach initiative you look at? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. It's going to be through, through that. And there will be greater returns, because we are marketplace people, most of us, right? Return. We're all talking about return on investment. I'm going to invest in the property. What's the return on investment? I've spoken to a few people about property in Bangalore. Everyone says, what? ah, return on investment. Where? We're all investing something. You're investing time, you're investing resources. As a marketplace person, I would say, hey, I want to, I want to give my king the biggest return on investment. So I've, of all the things I could sow into and invest my time and resources, that's what I'm going to invest in. Why? Bro, if you can help me with the next one. Why did Jesus pray for unity? Why? You talk to me, tell me. Why? Of all the things you could pray for, why? You tell me. Division, okay. Anything else? Yes. Just for, for those of you who like current affairs, Israel was going through extreme division up to a few weeks ago. Uh, Benjamin Netanyahu was trying to change the rules, the laws, like every country tries to do, remove power from the Supreme Court. He was doing that. He actually succeeded almost. I think he succeeded in doing that as well, if I'm not wrong. And there was a lot of division in Israel. 50% were for that decision, 50% was against. And there was a lot of division. A lot of energy and time was invested in that. And guess what? What happened in Gaza, on, on, the, on the border with Gaza, those settlements. This, is, this may sound crazy because you would not expect something like this to happen on the line of control with Pakistan. This would never happen on the line of control. You had entire villages that were just a mile away that were attacked. And it's heartbreaking when you look at the reports and so on, the video footage and the news that's coming out. The armies did not reach them. There was no soldiers, no support. Nothing came for six hours, nine hours, right? And this is the best army on the earth, the most, the most feared army on the earth, the most feared intelligence on the earth. Why? First of all, they took advantage that it was Sabbath, okay? Took advantage that it was Sabbath. The other thing was, I, I, would, I would say, there was distraction. That in the weeks and months leading up to this, energies were diverted elsewhere. There wasn't unity. And the enemy takes advantage of division. I'm going to back that up with some things. Because you shouldn't sit here thinking, oh, this guy's coming up with his own stuff. I want to back what I'm saying with some, with some heavy duty, uh, not just scripture, but also with verses, uh, with, with quotes. So I love this. Matthew chapter 12. Jesus knew their thoughts. Jesus knows our thoughts, okay? <laughs> Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. Every city or house, house meaning marriage, family as well, right? Divided against itself shall not stand. He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathers not with me scatters abroad. Scary. Now you know why he prayed for? For unity. Now you know. Right? Whether it's a nation, whether it's a, whether it's a city, whether it's a, it's a country. Did, I was talking to Cliffus uh, recently, and not just him, even to other friends. Like, did anyone know that Manipur would be going through what it was, what it's going through? 
Six, just rewind back nine months, start of this year. Did anyone know that Manipur was going to go through that? And it's still not resolved, right? We need to pray, right? For what? Unity, love, forgiveness, all of that. An eye for an eye makes the world go blind, right? <laughs> that revelation needs to hit people. Uh, we need to pray. All right, moving on to the next one. All right, I love these quotes. Forgive me, I'm going to be blasting a lot of quotes your way because it's important for you to know that everything I'm sharing, where I'm coming from, um, is not just mine. It's not just me. And, 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 it's, and there are respected leaders around the world who are saying the same thing. And I want to charge you that you may need to embrace this as well in your hearts. You can read this with me. Greg Rochelle is, is a pastor of one of the largest churches in the U.S. And he said this, Our mission is too critical and our time is too short to not unite. Danny Silk from Bethel Church, you may have heard of him. I love this. We need each other in order to bring heaven to earth and to accurately represent Jesus to the world. We need to restore the unity that God has intended for us from the beginning. A defining mark of revival is that as the spirit increases, divisions decrease. So people, people have all, all these other perceptions about, oh, revival looks like this and that and the other. Well, a huge sign is as the spirit increases, divisions decrease. D.L. Moody, a legend, I have never yet known the spirit of God to work where the Lord's people were divided. It doesn't matter whether you have an 8,000 member church or 9,000 member church. I've been there. I'm telling you, there can be more division <laughs> in, in that kind of setting as well, right? Because there can be different perspectives and so on. Uh, but this is powerful. I've never known the spirit of God to work where the Lord's people were divided. Thank you, brother. Next one. I love this. Let's read this together. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brothers to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious oil upon the head coming down the beard, even Aaron's beard coming down upon the edge of his robes. Question for you, what does oil signify? Yes, thank you so much. Anointing, can you give her a clap? Again, blood circulation. <laughs> Keep the blood circulation going. Anointing, oil, yes, yes. Yeah. Now my question to you is, when does the oil flow? Yeah. And when does it flow? When there is unity. See, we can we can try different formulas and so on, but the way to make it flow is. And what happens when the oil flows? You tell me. What happens? Yeah. And then what? What does anointing do? Breaks yokes. All right. You can see the supernatural on display. Things that we cannot even imagine or figure or even comprehend will start happening. Whether it's in our homes, in our families, in our marriages, in the nations, in the cities, in our companies, organizations, the anointing will flow. But the condition is unity. Thank you, bro. Next one. I love this. You know, you know uh, some of my friends joke with me and say, bro, you just... You're a quotes buff. You're always sharing quotes and quotes and quotes. And I, I'm, I'm huge on, on this thing, on this one aspect that sometimes the best way to honor those who have gone before us is by remembering what they have said. Because I can give, I can give lip service. And the Lord himself said, you know, you honor me with your lips, but your hearts are away from me. We, we want to honor those who have gone with us. And I think one of the best ways to do that, to, to demonstrate that honor, is to just look back at what what these heroes of the faith have said. Renard Bonke, I love what he said. The world is our oyster. Christ did not die to make us famous, but to save the lost. Sometimes rivalries have ruined revivals. The harvest must not go unreaped while reapers merely defend their own flock. When doors opened for the gospel, some Christian workers were found jealously guarding their, mon their monopoly as gold miners did their claim. You can go to the next one, bro. Thank you. We need to understand, this is prophet, a prophet from uh, the UK, Graham Cook, I love him. We need to understand the fear of God that exists when people come together in partnership and relationship. That is when we can rebuild, restore cities and set the captives free. So uh, how are we going to rebuild the city we're in right now? How are the cities of the earth going to be rebuilt? You look at what's happening across the world, whether it's Ukraine or wherever, Israel, wherever, Manipur, wherever, how are those cities going to be rebuilt? Through 
relationship partnership. He went on to say this, and I love this quote, and that's why, we, that's why I'm here. God is keenly interested in seeing ministries connect, network, partner with one another. He has not called any of us to be a ministry apart from everyone else. He has set us in the body of Christ, and He expects us to team with others. I have a news flash for you. Uh, as, as, as Pastor Cleophas was saying, we first met in 2016. How did I know him? Through a mutual friend, Manoj. Right? How many of you all know Manoj, of course. They know Manoj, right? Yeah, of course you know Manoj. <laughs> all right, prophet of the house. All right. So to Manoj. Now, I had met Manoj just a few months prior. I'm just trying to share something powerful with you here, and I, and I hope you get this, right? I had met Manoj a few months prior, and he said, man, you should... Uh, invite Dr. Amos. And this was 2015. And I said, okay, you know what? The bank looks a bit empty, but I'm going to step out in faith and invite Dr. Amos. Invited him. Next year, when Manoj got to know that, that uh, I'm, I'm having uh, uh, Brother Sheldon and, and Hari and, and, all the, and some other, another dear uh, man of God from, uh, from the UK coming in, Manoj said, you know what? I really think you should also invite another dear friend of mine. I'm like, Manoj, you have my attention. <laughs> like, all right? and, and he mentioned Pastor Cleophus' name. He said, I, I, I know this man. He's a man of integrity and all of that. And, I'm, and in my head, I said, oh, goodness, the bank is again a bit tight. Hosting three people, one from the UK and elsewhere, it, it costs, right? And the way my wife and I roll, we do everything from our own, for, from our own pocket, right? Uh, so we went. I said, you know what? If you're saying it, We'll do it. Now, here's something I want to leave with you because you're talking about kingdom and I wanted to align with the series that he was doing. The kingdom moves at the speed of what? Oh, give, me, give me a hand, bro. It can move at the speed of light. It can, right? But here's the thing. There's another word for light. The synonym for light or the other side of light is trust. Had I heard a single message of his before, before I said yes? No. I hadn't heard a single message of his. I had not seen any content or material of his. But I trusted a man. And I said, you know, man, if you're saying it, that's good enough for me, bro. I don't need to see a video. I don't, I don't need to see a sermon. The kingdom moves at the speed of, of trust. All right? And, and trust takes time. I'll be frank with you. I'm going to be real with you. Trust is hard to build, but it, 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 it gets degenerated. It gets lost in seconds. All right? So here's the thing which I feel so strongly about. I think unity can only happen when there is trust built. I'll be real with you. I thought this whole unity, when I was embarking, my wife and I were embarking on this whole unity initiative, I thought people would be happy. <laughs> I thought pastors and leaders would be happy. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh no. Demons started manifesting. <laughs> I, I felt like, have you seen the movie Matrix, Keanu Reeves? You know, we are dodging bullets. I felt like I was dodging, do, dodging all, all the bullets there. I'm like, whoa, I, I, I thought you would be happy with this. I thought you, yeah, yes, amen to that. I thought, I thought you would be happy with this whole unity thing. No, no. There, there are forces that don't want unity, whether that's in Israel whether that's in Manipur, whether that's in Ukraine, wherever, there are forces that do not want unity. In the U.S., with the whole election saga, right? You, there are forces that do not want unity. And that's where we, if our central message is collaboration and unity, then we can speak to the culture that is more divided today than it's probably been any time in history, than any other time in history. We're living, we're living in a very divided world. You look at any country, any continent, it's, it's, there's a lot of division going on. Um, and the enemy takes full advantage of that, right? I love this quote. Thank you, bro. You're helping me. <laughs> the spirit finds unity irresistible. Conversely, what? The demonic inhabits disunity. What we need is an active, personal, individual, corporate promoting of unity in every home, every church, every city, in every nation. I love this. Unity can start with just one person making a stand for love. Just one person. That one person is you. Can you tell your neighbor that one person is? One person is you. One person is you. You can make a stand. You can make a stand. Um, let's move on. I love this as well. 
one of my favorite scriptures, Luke 6, coming from a Hindu background to the Lord. I have a news flash for you. All right. My journey is, has been a very interesting journey. I don't want to go too much into that. There's a YouTube video in case you're interested. <laughs> I don't want to waste time there. <laughs> but but I, I love this because for the longest time, my parents raised me in a, with a very secular mindset. I didn't have the whole, you know, ultra-right. <laughs> I wasn't raised with that ultra-right mindset. I come from Calcutta, a very chilled out place. You'll find a temple and a mosque and a church all beside each other. Everyone's cool, right? Everyone goes everywhere. All right, so that's the kind of mindset I was raised up in. So my parents, devout Hindus, we had a massive prayer altar with all the idols there, and there was Jesus also, right? And there was, there was the Bible, Quran, Gita, all on the same shelf. That's how I was raised. If you came and knocked on our door, you would have seen a cross, and you would have seen the Om symbol and everything all on our door. If you came to any room of our house, you would have seen the cross, you would have seen Mother Mary, and everyone was there. We want to keep everyone happy. We got to keep everyone happy. We don't want to upset anybody. Just, just have them all right there. Just, just let them know. Yeah, we all want to be blessed. All Indians. Indians want to be blessed. We don't want to lose anything. Don't anger anyone. <laughs> keep everybody happy. Oh, goodness. We had, we had a huge budget for Agarbathis and for all of that. Anyway, anyway, Agarbathi for Jesus too. Right, so I'm serious. I did, I was the Agarbathi guy. My job, my job was, my, my mom was like, you, your job, boy, is to make sure that lamp doesn't go out. Keep that lamp on the altar. And sometimes it would go out. I'd be like, oh my God, the lamp has gone out. What's going to happen to my exam results? Right, anyway. But my point is, when I then come to the Lord and I open the book and I read the book and he says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord shall enter. Whoa. That completely like, whoa, okay, the Bible was, in our, it was on our prayer shelf, but we never read it. That happens in church too. <laughs> I discovered, right? Not everyone who says to me, Lord, shall enter. And then was this, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do the things which I, which I say? Whoever comes to me and hears what I say and does them, I will show you what he's like. I'll show you who he's like. He's like a man building his house who dug deep, laid the foundation on the rock, and when the flood arose, the stream beat incessantly against that house, and it could not shake it because it was founded on the, on the rock. But he who heard and did nothing is like a man who built his house on the earth without a foundation, against which the stream beat vehemently, and immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. I want to dare you today, all right? You can't be in church seven days a week and not be building on the rock. I'll be real with you. I've seen a lot in 19 years. I've seen guys who got baptized with me and not, not walking with the Lord today, completely backslided. I'm not impressed with the number of baptisms that happen in a church, honestly. I'm not, because I've seen a lot. We used to have like 40, 50 baptisms a week. But the church never grew. We were, we were kind of happy with the 8,000, 9,000 mark. Do the math, 50 baptisms a week, 50 or 100 newcomers a week, do the math. That's thousands of people in a year. But I knew, because I was, my wife and I were involved four days a week, every week for that decade, not everyone was staying the course. Because at the end of the day, everybody wants a free ticket to... <laughs> everybody wants a free ticket to... Right, I want to I talk about this a bit more, bro, if you can help me. Now it's not misbehaving, is it? Okay, the animations are gone now. Voodoo. I've got another video for you. Now, this is a song. Has anyone heard of Jonathan Helser? No longer slaves? I'm no longer. You heard the song? All right. There we go. So this is a song for you. Please. Uh, it's on the next slide, actually, bro. Uh, yeah. You can just check out the lyrics. In a garden, we fell. Not my will, but yours be done. My sins he became, so I could be like him.
horses made our way so we can enter in we can go back to the God once again the cross is made of Yeah, in case you miss the lyrics, I love it. It's, it's profound, right? Um, yeah, bro, I think the should come up. There we go. Okay. In a garden we fell, in a garden he prayed. Someone say amen to that. Amen. That's a anointed lyric right there. <laughs> Not my will, but yours be done. My sins he became, so I could be like him, to go beyond the veil and see his face. The cross has made a way... So we can enter in to go back to the wow to go back to the garden once again the cross is made away forever I will say worthy is the lamb that was slain now check this out million dollar question to go back to the garden again which garden is he referring to whatever whatever Adam lost in Eden so here's a million dollar question what was the garden like Genesis chapter 2 let's read this together now the Lord God had planted a garden in the nest in the east nest <laughs> in the east in Eden and there he put the man he had formed the, sorry just go back again bro uh, sorry previous one previous one sorry the animation is kicking in again the Lord God made all kinds of trees grow out of the ground the trees that were pleasing to the eye and good for food lunch is around the corner the Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. Can you tell your neighbor, work it, to work it and take care of it? Let's move next. Now going back to Genesis 1. The, then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have, tying it again with the whole series that you're enjoying, let them have dominion. Let them have dominion over the fish, over the birds of the air, the cattle, and so on. Everything. God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish and the birds and so on. Everything. All right? I know you're on this, on, this, on this entire journey on kingdom dominion. My question to you is, do we have a kingdom mindset? I love the statement there. Religion prepares man to leave the earth. The kingdom prepares man to dominate. Uh, I, want to prepare, I want to present this to you. Major, the reason why the Christian church has lost a lot of influence, because essentially, if you can go to the next slide, bro, we are presenting Jesus as Savior, but we're not presenting him as King of the Kingdom. That's why for the longest time I could come to church. I was an ECG Christian. ECG, Easter, Christmas, Good Friday. <laughs> right? I was an ECG Christian for the longest time. My parents would bring me to the Catholic Church, wherever, right? And 
didn't know, really know who Jesus was. How is it possible to be an ECG Christian for all those years and not know who Jesus was? How is it possible to even know or not know what is the gospel? If you asked me, if you met me in college in, in, in 2013 or 2012 and said, Hey bro, I see a cross around your neck. What's your name? I said, I'll say, my name is Tara. Hey, are you a Christian, bro? I'll say, yes, I'm a Christian. Was I? So what is a Christian? <laughs> what is the gospel? All right, I'm asking, you, I'm asking you tough questions tonight, okay? I'm, I'm just here to just lovingly challenge you. Don't hate me, all right? What is the gospel? What is the message that most church denominations are preaching? Bro, the next one. Most church denominations have fallen into the trap of offering or selling free tickets to heaven or fire insurance. And I'll tell you, I'll be honest, I bought it. All right? But I'll tell you what, very quickly in your, in your Christian life, you realize that that's not going to help you. You cannot be a disciple if you're just buying fire insurance or the free ticket. It's, it's not going to work, right? Um, moving on. What is the message that most most church denominations are preaching. Is there more preaching about sin or the Son of God who paid our ransom, the Son who heals, the Son who saves, the Son who delivers? Let's be honest, most denominations are very sin-focused. And, and right here, right here in India, right? I, my mother came into a mega church, walked into a mega church in Dubai, in Dubai. And one of the pastor's wives walked up to my mother after the service and said, remove the bindi or you're going to hell in Dubai bro and this is the first time I'm bringing my Hindu mother to church <laughs> demons are very active in church I'll tell you you don't it, it, it's not it's not out there demons are very very active in church and what are the chances of bringing my mother I'm like I want her to come to the Lord and so I bring her to church her first visit to church and this past this certain pastor's wife comes and tells her that pastor in case you're interested the pastor was from down south you know? Anyway, but my point is, my point is, that happened again next week. And like 8,000 people, how are you able to find my mother only out of 8,000 people two Sundays in a row and tell her, remove the bindi, you're going to hell? We have a problem, people. We have a problem. And so, what is there more preaching about sin? And I love, I, love this, uh, I love this scripture, right? 1 Corinthians 15, 56. I was talking to some friends about this. For sin, is the st for, for sin is the sting that results in death. Now check this out. And the law gives sin its... What gives sin its power? Aha. So here's the, here's the problem, right? Most church denominations are hammering what? Law. So if I'm going to keep hammering law at you, what am I doing? I'm increasing the strength of sin in your life. So fine, you may have watched something on the internet that you're not supposed to watch. And I can preach about, oh, it is sinful. Oh, you need to repent. Or you're losing your fire insurance. <laughs> right? What is that going to do? Going to put more shame, guilt, condemnation on you? You may not even come next week because you're like, oh, I'm a hypocrite. I shouldn't go. You're getting what I'm saying? Right? So what happens? You're increasing the hold of sin in people's lives instead of actually offering and giving them freedom. Right? So what does love relationship do? Hey man, you're better than this. You shouldn't be watching that stuff on the net. You know that. You're better than this, bro. What, what, what's going on? What, what made you do that? Come on, let's talk about it. Let's, let's talk about it, bro. Hey, newsflash, just in case you don't know. <laughs> this may come as a, as a news flash to some of you. They, they, did a, they did a research in the U.S. on drug addicts who went to rehab. And they studied the guys who went to rehab and those who relapsed and those, they didn't, those who didn't relapse. You know what they discovered? The guys who relapsed didn't have a loving circle of friends. But the guys who didn't relapse had very strong circle of friends saying, I'm not, I'm, you're not going back, bro. We're holding on to you. You, we're staying with, you're staying with us, bro. You're staying with us till you're, we're not letting you go, right? And they researched both the groups and they found out the guys who relapsed were guys who didn't have those kind of loving friendships. What shocks me is when I've spoken to guys in Dubai and they told me that they, are not, they don't even drink alcohol. The only reason they were going to the bubs and the bars was because they were lonely. 
That breaks my heart. So in my head, I'm telling, I'm talking to all my friends and I'm saying, we can have the best services, but what people are looking for is friendship. They're looking for kingdom friendships. And, I'm, and I want to dare you and challenge you here. We're talking about dominion and influence and all these things. That cannot happen without old-fashioned friendship. And I was talking to some friends and I was saying like, hey man, we did friendship better when we, were, when we were in school. What happened after we came to church? We forgot how to do friendship? I don't have time anymore for conversations. How come? It's a shame if the world can do friendship better than we can. Something's wrong if the world can do friendship better than we can. So I want to dare you and challenge you. I've spoken about unity and all these things. At the end of the day, it comes down to simple, old-fashioned friendship. It and it takes time. <laughs> it, 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 friendship takes time. It takes time. It takes investment of time. The easiest thing to do is to give money. What is more expensive than money? Time. <laughs> Marriage, most, most difficult, hardest thing to give is, is time, right? I love this quote. I believe the enemy has penetrated the church. He couldn't beat it, so he penetrated it. We have to separate ourselves from any ideology or doctrine or theology that is not in line with the absolute good news of the Lord Jesus Christ and that does not represent the beauty and the majesty, the fullness and the abundance or what God is really, really like in His nature. Next one. All right. Yeah, you can skip this as well, bro. You can skip this. You can skip this. All right. I'll, yeah, let's skip this as well. Okay. For the sake of time, I want, to, I want to try and land here. Now, all things are of God. This is 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Let's read it together. Now, all things are of God who has reconciled us to Himself through Christ Jesus and he has given us the ministry of reconciliation that is God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself not imputing their trespasses or sins to them and he has given us the message the word of reconciliation now then we are ambassadors for Christ as though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. What is Paul saying? The message of the church should be a message of reconciliation. Not sin, not anything else, but the message of reconciliation. Another thing he's saying here is, who are you? You show sure you're a child of God and all of that. Yes, but you are an ambassador. And who are you representing? You're representing a kingdom. You're representing a king. Now, I'll be honest with you, there are times where I, haven't, where I have not been a good ambassador. I mean, like, Lord, mm, Lord, I've not been a good ambassador today. I lost it with that colleague. Let's be real. All right? <coughs> there are times when we are not good ambassadors and you've got to make up for it. Of course, you, you, you say, Lord, please help me be a better ambassador. I need some download of love and grace and patience, all of that. Help me be a better ambassador. Because guess what? You're not spending 60% of your time in church. Where are you spending 60% of your time? Are you spending 60% of your time in this building? No, you're not. Where are you spending 60% of your waking hours? In the office, in the marketplace. So where is that kingdom impact? Where does that kingdom impact and salt and all of that need to be seen and felt? Right there. Can be in the marketplace, can be in school, wherever you are. Right? And so the place where we, need to, where we need to shine as ambassadors is right there. Because they may not come into this building, but they are looking at us. They are watching us. I'll be frank with you, ever since I've, I mean, I very really recently started wearing stuff like this, you know. And I was, for the first decade of my Christian life, I was like, no, I don't want to, you know, uh, show anything. And then the Lord was like, are you ashamed of me? I'm like, uh, okay. And so then I started wearing this. I wear this in the Middle East, bro. This is not easy to wear this in the Middle East, right? And I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm 42. I don't care anymore. <laughs> At 42, you've got to cross the chicken line at least, okay? I don't care anymore. But you know what I've seen? After I wear this stuff, I get more bad service. True. After I, after I started wearing material like this, I get more bad service. And it's a beautiful test for me. The old me would be like, how can you give me bad service? But the new me, because I'm just like, I hear the voice, you're wearing the shirt, bro. 
you're wearing the shirt, don't lose it. <laughs> you're wearing the shirt, don't lose it. So, <laughs> so I'm like, okay, I can't lose it right now. I'm wearing the shirt. Lord, thank you for grace, peace. It's all cool, bro. Thank you so much for the bad service in my head, right? What am I trying to say? I, I, now I wear this all the more because this actually makes me more accountable. I'm like, you know, you read the scriptures, put on the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> you're like, you're literally putting on. And now you're like, okay, you've got to really raise your game here. Okay? Because otherwise no one... <laughs> anyway, I'm going to shut up there. <laughs> move on. Let's move on, bro. I'm trying to land the plane. All right, I love this, okay? Now, I'm going to probably try to park here for the sake of time. Jesus was going through all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of... Gospel of healing, anything else? Gospel of what? I purposely hidden something there. What gospel was he preaching? Gospel of? Ah, okay. So here's the problem. For the longest time, the gospel of the kingdom has been kind of hidden or totally ignored. Right? It's been replaced with another gospel called the gospel of? Salvation, fire insurance. You want a free ticket to heaven? Come to Jesus. Now, hold on. Does Jesus, has Jesus purchased and made a way for us to go to heaven? Absolutely. I have more faith in the blood of Jesus than I have in Agarbatis. I have more, I have more faith in the blood of Jesus than taking a dip in a river. Up north, somewhere. <laughs> I have more faith in the blood of Jesus than in my own good works. Because I know, even if I'm saying one lie a day, in a year, how many is that? 65. Multiply that by 10 years. That's 3,650. Oh my God. It's a lot. And that's just one lie a day, bro. <laughs> Where's one lie? I'm not that I'm lying. <laughs> I'm just saying, all right? My point is, I have more faith in the blood of Jesus than in my own righteousness. Let's be clear about that. But let's, let's be clear about this as well. He didn't go about saying from place to place, Hey guys, I'm dying in three years. Watch out. Believe in me when I die, okay? See ya. He didn't do that. He went about preaching the gospel of the kingdom. And then he was healing people. And you see that not just in one place, you see it throughout. Alright, you can see the next verse as well, bro. Yeah. And he tells us, what does he tell us? As you go, he's telling the disciples, preach saying what the kingdom of heaven is at hand and the next one i love this but seek first the what the church <laughs> i'll tell you how we read this today we read this as seek first church attendance and everything you need will be added to you i'm telling you as a guy who served in the mega church for 10 years four days a week every week for 10 years you can be coming to church Seven days a week, that doesn't mean you're seeking the kingdom of God. Because not every church is actually. Why I salute this man right here and why I salute all of you is, you guys are going after this. You guys are going after this. You can be assured that if the kingdom of God is your number one thing, everything, every need of yours will be met. Can I share something with you guys? I'm going to drop, 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 shock you here. All right? I don't have a driver's license. I don't have a car. I don't own a square inch of property in India or anywhere else. All right? I don't have a degree. Nothing. But I'm drawing a salary that's higher than most MBAs and masters guys in the city. My wife and I together, we're able to fund stuff that most people can't even dream of funding in terms of ministry and stuff. Why am I saying this? Some people, or the world will tell you that you need this, that, and the other. You need a degree, you need a license, you need a car, you need this, you need that. I'm telling you, all you need to do is this. Seek the first the kingdom. Don't, tell, don't get me wrong, I'm not bashing other stuff. But my point is, if you have all the other stuff, but if you're not doing this, you're wasting your, you're wasting your time. And you're going to be in for some disappointment as well. Make sure you're seeking first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Everything you need will be added to you. You don't have to chase it. It's going to come after you. Trust me, I'm a living proof example of that. Everything you need will come chasing after you. I can go on and on with stories, but I'm going to 
because you need to have lunch. <laughs> did I give you some food for thought? I hope I did. If you forget anything today, at least remember the shirt. <laughs> right? and, and, the, and, and, our, and our lion friend, and, and you know, the ministry of headbutting. All right? Okay? Bro, I'm going to end right there for the sake of time. Yeah, sure, bro. Sure, 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 sure. Can, can, we, can, can I just... I'm, I'm a huge... So as this whole unity thing is so huge on my heart, right? I want to ask you again to just join hands with people around you. Maybe brother to brother, sister to sister. If you're with a couple, Manisha, can I maybe call you in front, mm -hmm. love? Yeah? This is just so that we can just pray. If you're married people here, can you just join hands with your better or worse half? <laughs> that was a joke. <laughs> All right? Let's, let's just pray. Let's just pray. If you're single here, that's cool. Just join hands with somebody. Let no hand be free. We're all in this together. We're all in the same boat. All right. Father, we just thank you so much for this time. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Lord Jesus, you said where two or three are gathered in your name, you're right there in our midst. And Lord, we know that you're here in our midst. You know, it's not about the thousands. You're just looking for hearts that are hungry for you. Hearts that are just craving your presence. So Lord, we just join our hearts with one another. We join our hearts with yours. Father, we just thank you for the gift and the blessing of oneness and unity. Lord, you paid a price for unity. You paid a, you paid a price for oneness. You paid a price for us to get into your kingdom. The blood was expensive. The blood that was shed on the cross was expensive. And we don't take that for granted, Lord. We don't want to treat the blood of Yeshua of Nazareth like a free ticket, Lord. It's not a free ticket, Lord. We are so grateful that we are saved from hell. Not because of our own good works or righteousness, but because of the blood that was shed on the cross. We are grateful for your blood. We are grateful that your blood paid the fine. We recognize, Lord, that without your blood, we don't stand a chance. But Father, we also recognize that you've called us to preach your kingdom. You've called us to seek your kingdom. And Lord, I pray that you would just take us to another place. You would, you would reorder our priorities, that your kingdom would not be number two, number three on the list, but first and foremost, O oh Lord. That in our marriages, Lord, we'll be seeking your kingdom. As, as single people, we'll be seeking your kingdom. As, as, a, as a body of believers, as a church, as, as Christian believers, as lovers of God, that we would be seeking your kingdom and your righteousness above everything else. And as, as the journey continues, Lord, as the series continues, that you would give everyone, all of us, a deeper understanding of what it is to seek your kingdom first. What does it look like to be seekers of your kingdom? What does it look like to have dominion? What does it look like, Lord? What did you do? What did you mean, Lord, when you put us back in the garden? So, Lord, I just thank you that you're going to give us all a revelation, deeper revelation in the days, the weeks to come, of what it is that you restored. The cross has made a way for us to enter in. The blood of Jesus made a way for us to go back to the garden, to go back to, to what Adam had in the garden, which was intimacy with you, relationship with you, but much more than that, dominion. Dominion, Lord. Dominion. We just thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, that every need is being met. Every need is being met. You know the needs of every person in this room. You know the needs that we are dealing with. You know the cries of our heart. No one knows the Christ of our heart like you do, Lord, what we need, what we need. And we, we thank you, Lord, that as we are pursuing you, your kingdom, seeking you, your kingdom, every need will be met in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.